Sam Nessler joins the show to talk Dallas Stars free agency, some possible future contracts, and plenty more up next on Locked on Stars. Your Locked on Stars, your daily podcast on the Dallas Stars, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Howdy, Stars fans, and welcome back to another episode of Locked On Stars, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every single day. It's a pleasure to be with you. I'm Joey Erickson, former producer of 105 Through the Fan. Please be sure to subscribe. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube. And as always, thank you so much for making us a part of your day and making us your first listen. I would like to reintroduce to the Locked On Stars fan base once again, Sam Nessler. I believe the last time we had a conversation, it was about a week before free agency and then chaos ensues as it usually does. Stars fans are worried about where the future is headed, but I'm excited to hop on with Sam today and talk about plenty of Dallas Stars news. Sam, how have you been over the last month? How's free agency been for you and (laughs) um, everything else uh, that comes with that? Yeah, I've been good, Joey. Thanks. Uh, This was probably the most chaotic first day or two of free agency that I've ever experienced. So that was, that was fun. It's a lot less fun when you're writing about it, but it's still fun to watch <laughs> and, uh, and get into. And it's just been, it's just been wild. It's, it's becoming the wait till the season starts to find out who's still on your team kind of, kind of thing in, in hockey. So it's exciting. Yeah. It, it was literally two days removed from like the Stanley cup final. It was all bunched together that one weekend along with the draft. So there was just so much happening. And then Monday hits for uh, July 1st and man, those deals were big. Some of the terms are huge. And I'll ask you about a few of those as we get in to today's episode, but uh, thank you for coming on once again, excited to, um, to talk some Dallas stars hockey. Today's episode is brought to you by indeed still searching for a great candidate for your company. Don't research, just match with indeed start hiring now with the $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post to indeed.com slash locked on terms and conditions apply need to hire you need indeed so the first one I want to hit you with uh, is about Scott Wedgwood because you put out a fantastic article on daily Faceoff where you uh, talk to him about him wanting to stay in Dallas but Jim Nill spoke uh, at a presser post free agency and said that was just a, a cap hit. And obviously he wanted to be here. And I think many stars fans are not necessarily worried about his departure for his play reasons, as much as his relationship with Jake Ottinger and how great those two were just together in the locker room. And they turned out to be a really, really nice tandem. So um, fr- from your perspective, what did you hear from your conversations with him? And do you think that may affect Ottinger? Maybe is there going to be some lasting uh, effect with not having him in the locker room next season, or is it sort of the thing it's a business and this just happens sometimes? Yeah, it's a bit of both. Um, (laughs) It's definitely going to, I think it's definitely going to have an effect. I mean, I, I've spoken to a lot of goalies. We've seen a lot of good goalie tandems, even in Dallas when, you know, Bishop and Hudobin and, um, it just never felt like this. Like these guys were best friends and they spent so much time together. They fit so perfectly with goalie coach, Jeff Reese. Uh, They get out there early every day. They, they love to challenge each other. They're both super competitive. And I felt really bad because Scott was very clear when he talked to me multiple times, Mm -hmm. we want to stay, we're trying to do everything we can. Um, But at this point he, he deserved um, a little bit of a raise and his numbers are, aren't great. Like most goalies are going to be, but he brought a ton to the team. Um, I think he proved himself. He got his first, you know, one way contracts and and he moved himself up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, And at his age, he just, he just wanted a little bit more. And it's kind of funny because he didn't really get that much more. Um, Yeah. (laughs) Funny that the stars that just to show how tight the stars are against the cap, that they weren't able to give him that tiny bit of a bonus. So um, it'll, it'll have its effect. It's, it's good for Scott. Um, I don't know if he'll play more because Saros plays just about as many games as any other goalie does. Yeah. Uh, but I think that it's just one of those things that just has to happen sometimes. And um, the real question will be now how Ottinger can blend um, with the Smith and, and anyone else that, that comes up in the, in the backup position, because let's not forget, it wasn't just that their relationship was good. Wedgwood saved Ottinger that first year when he came over, like, Mm-hmm. Jake was getting hurt. He was tired. He wasn't the same. He wasn't playing well. And then they bring in Wedgwood at the deadline and all of a sudden it just changed everything. And now Jake's slowly been 
moving his games back, which is how he, he should be doing it. He yeah. doesn't need to be playing, you know, 65 games a year. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so it'll it'll take some time, but uh, it'll just be a real question about the relationship. I don't I don't question to Smith's level with Wedgwood on the ice. I think they're they're pretty similar. To Smith, maybe even has a little more upside potential, uh, but it's just going to be the relationship, uh, you know, in the room and and can they find that balance? Because Scott was also super open about I don't want to take your job. And yeah, he said that from day one. I don't want the job. Um, I want to play and I want to get as much time as I can, but my goal here is to make sure you succeed. And, you know, he's talking about how just little things from fixing Jake's helmet when it comes off or uh, when Jake's frustrated about some of the defense, Scott takes that on himself to tell the defense. So it mm-hmm. doesn't come from a goalie sound like complaining. It's just all those little things that, that he did. And uh, to be honest, it, it'll be a bummer for some, for a lot of fans because it, that dynamic was not only fun to watch, but it was huge for Jake's performance on the ice. Yeah, the, the nuances of that relationship were, were obviously pretty great. So it, it'll be pretty interesting to see how uh, Jake takes that into to next season. And look, Scott was sort of an unsung hero last year. Jake went down for a month and Wedgwood stepped up and he played a ton. I think he got one game off um, in about a month. And that was Matt Murray who stepped into a game in Minnesota and pitched a shutout. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> but uh, I mean, Scott really kept Dallas in the top three of the Central Conference. I think there were one or two for pretty much the majority of his time at the helm. And uh, he, he bet on himself to, to come to Dallas. And uh, as you kind of alluded to, it, it's hard, especially as a goaltender, to probably just come out in the open and say, I, I don't want the job. Like, like he, he just wants to to be there for Jake and, and get some time uh, where he can obviously uh, prove himself. And he, he was fantastic. And as you said, uh, I think a fan favorite rather quickly. So it'll be something to uh, especially keep an eye on here into next season with Ottinger. Um, and to Smith as Ottinger tries to take a load off and Dallas has tried to make a pretty concerted effort to, to at least give him some some more rest because he's played a ton and um, it, it's kind of hard to believe it only be his like third full season here in, in Dallas as uh, the number one netminder. I, I did want to switch to some of the, the free agency decisions by Dallas and, and I guess this will be a, a two-part question. So uh, my, my first one would be what were your expectations for Dallas heading into free agency? And then what are your thoughts after July 1st transpired? Yeah, my expectations were pretty low. I I didn't think they Mm -hmm. needed to make a ton of changes. It was just really the questions with the big guys, the Duchesne's, the Tanev, Mm -hmm. Wedgwood, uh, the contracts for Harley and things like that were less of a question of if, but just what number and, and term. But it wasn't I wasn't expecting a ton. You know, I know they have to mm-hmm. they'd like to find a little more scoring, especially with Pavelski um, leaving. But they have guys coming up. We we talked about, you know, Bork and Johnston and Stankoven. And so they have a ton of people in terms of who they think could fill those roles and in, in the especially in the forward group. So really, I expected there to be some defenseman news. But to be honest, didn't expect it to be as dramatic and <laughs> wild as it was. I mean, I've never seen a team sign so many not huge name players, but make such dramatics out of it. If that makes any yeah. sense. Like, yeah. Um, so my expectation was, was just fairly simple. Um, if they couldn't sign Tanev, there would have been a lot more that happened and that's exactly what happened. But uh, in terms of what they did, it's just, it was the strangest day because they just kind of went with the, the quantity over quality, right? That's mm-hmm. they picked a, a Jim Neal just took a handful of guys that have had some success. You know, Dumba's had great years, a couple of great years. Uh, Lubushkin's been solid in certain years, not so much other years. Uh, Brendan Smith has been a veteran that, again, has had pretty good years and helped a lot of young guys in New Jersey, but also has struggled and been a seventh or eighth defenseman for them at times. So mm-hmm. it was almost the, like, let's group them all up. They all have some upside. Let's throw them in, see who pops up. Maybe one of them jumps up to a top four because – they fit with the system. Maybe mm-hmm. Niels Lundqvist jumps in. It just kind of felt like a throw it all in there and let's see what sticks. And if it doesn't stick January, February, we look for something else. And that's what I think that, that Niels kind of doing with that, um, with those contracts that he signed. Yeah. I mean, they obviously missed out on some of the big fish. And when you looked at some of the numbers and the terms of those deals, it was just no way Dallas was going to be able to make that work in their cap situation. My perspective is Dallas was sort of pushing the problem down the line because of those 
big contracts like Johnston and Stan Coven coming up. Of yep. course, Harley, who may sign a bridge deal, could be long-term. Who knows where they want to go? But from my perspective, it was kind of, you know, we can't go out and get that big name defenseman right now. So we'll get a few right shot defensemen in here to at least fill the void. And maybe it delays the window, which, I mean, their window to win a Stanley Cup is still wide, wide open. They're going to be a very, very good team next year. But my reservations come from you could have Dumba and Labushkin potentially in your top four. And it's not that they're bad players. They are okay players. But I don't know at this point in their careers if that is necessarily the best suitable spot for them. Am, am I being a bit over exaggerating there? Or is you think that's a, a fair take that you may be asking Dumba and Labushkin to do a lot, even though Labushkin did have some success with Riley. So maybe he will pair well with Miro. That is sort of my perspective on things. Yeah, no, you're, you're, you're absolutely right. And I think that the, the thought is like, is Dumba, could Dumba really slide in on the top pairing with Haskin? And it's like, that doesn't feel like a solid top pairing. And that's where Tana losing Tana, because Tana, yeah. In my opinion, it could not be this way with Nil, but in my opinion, at some point next year, if they had Tanev back, he would have been with Miro. Oh, yeah. I think that I don't think that they wanted to throw that in the playoffs and just kind of see what happened, but they want they want to get him on his left as much as they've pushed that along that they don't necessarily need him on his yes. left. He's one of the best players in the NHL. He sh just because he can play on the right doesn't mean he should. And I don't know if you know you have you have Dumba, Labushkin. Uh, Petrovic and Lundqvist, I believe, are the only right shot guys. So, mm -hmm. there are any of those top guys? I I don't exactly. See it. And yeah. so, yeah, I, I agree with you. And it's one of those things where it feels like a kick the can along, not in a bad way, but just in the sense of let's yeah. start the year and see what what team we have here. Exactly. Like we went all the way to the Western Conference Final. If we didn't necessarily tire out or whatever ended up happening, that kind of hit that funk against Edmonton, we're in the Stanley Cup Final. So yeah, we lost a couple pieces, but outside of Tanev, you know, we didn't lose huge pieces. So let's bring in a few, throw them on the ice and see what it looks like in the first couple months. And they might just have the answers to their questions right there. You know, Stankoven might come out and score 40. Mm -hmm. uh, their defenseman might take the reins and Lundqvist jumps up. And there's a lot of things that can happen. And I think he gave himself a little security. He has enough guys now. There's enough bodies um, that he can go that along there. And then all of a sudden, okay we really need a blank. We really need someone on this side. It's a lot cheaper to do that at the trade deadline, especially trying to find a rental or something like that. So I completely agree with you. And I think that those contracts came into play and it's the same reason I believe Harley probably doesn't sign a long-term deal, just like mm. Ottinger did, you know, sign the extent of the, the bridge and Robertson. Um, it's just a really tough salary cap world right now for, for everybody. And I think everyone else outside of Nashville is feeling it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's um, a great point to remind myself and other Stars fans because many of us are frustrated due to the fact that it felt like Dallas took a, a, a minor step back from where they left in the Western Conference Final. And I usually look at it from the terms of, okay, you've been to the Western Conference Final in the last two years. What can you do to get over the hump? And currently... I don't think they're a Stanley Cup contender necessarily with the back end. I still think they're a piece away. And I think that can frustrate many people because, yeah, you're probably going to have to go out and get somebody at, at the deadline. And even if they had Tanev, they'd probably look to, to add something else anyways. So that always is an option. But I, I think it was frustrating for many fans because it's like, well, you know, now we're kind of stuck where we were sort of at the beginning of last year and we're going to have to do it again, which isn't yeah. necessarily a bad thing. And as you mentioned, it could be cheaper just to get a rental. Yeah, I mean, it's I honestly just think about like I understand the, every fan's perspective, yeah. and, and it's it's very valid because they couldn't keep up with the Oilers with the team they had. Yeah, and then they just got worse on the blue line. So it's kind of like, all right, if they were thrown into a series with the Oilers right now, they probably don't have a chance. And that's that's a very valid point. Um, and I think that that Nil and and his staff are kind of hoping that someone takes the reins in that group. And if they don't. I think those bigger moves that that the fans like to see are, are have to be coming because there's no way you can just yeah. phone it in and say in the next few years we'll get back to where we were. They have to take advantage of of where they are right now.
Man, it would have been a, a ton of fun to watch Tanev and, and Miro play <laughs> together. Unfortunately, they really never gave themselves the opportunity to because they were just rolling five defensemen. <laughs> they were just rotating, kind of everybody was was playing with everybody. But, oh, that could have been one of the uh, highlight pairs um, in the National Hockey League. Um, let's segue into some contract talks, specifically Harley, Jamie, Ben, even because his contract is expiring extra, uh, after next year and uh, in a few more in just a moment. Today's episode of Locked On Stars is brought to you by Indeed. We're driven by the search for better, but when it comes to hiring, the best way to search for a candidate isn't to search at all. Don't search, match with Indeed. If you need to hire, you need Indeed. Indeed is your matching and hiring platform with over 350 million global monthly visitors, according to Indeed data, and a matching engine that helps you find quality candidates fast. Ditch the busy work. Use Indeed for scheduling, screening, and messaging so you can connect with high quality candidates join more than 3.5 million businesses worldwide that use indeed to hire great talent fast and listeners of this show will get a 75 dollar sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at indeed.com slash locked on just go to indeed.com slash locked on right now and support our show by saying you heard about indeed on this podcast indeed.com slash locked on terms and conditions apply need to hire you need indeed So Jamie Benn's contract has sort of been a hot topic here over the past couple of weeks, just in, in stars lore almost, because obviously his contract is coming to um, an end after next year. And look, I, I think Jamie Benn has served the Dallas Stars in a wonderful way as a captain, but I also can't gaslight people into saying that he's lived up to his contract and his number. I could fault the stars for not putting the right pieces around him early enough in his prime too. I think that's a fair criticism from the front office, but as I kind of mold over it over the last week or so, man, it, it, it seems like Jamie could possibly get a really nice three to four year term deal somewhere else. I just don't think that fits into the Dallas stars future. So it really is an interesting decision from Jamie and the stars because I'm sure they want to stay together, but it feels like to me that Jamie would have to take a pay cut, obviously, and he'd probably have to take a shorter term deal than he maybe want to, because I think he could get five and a half, six million dollars from a team for his services. I really do because he's productive and he has shown, especially what teams probably love is that he encourages or he, 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 revels in the fact that he can play with younger players and he doesn't mind that playing with a, a young guy and kind of helping them along. So where do you kind of stand on Jamie Ben? maybe what that contract looks like, the number and term and specifically how it fits with Dallas's future with these young guys that are kind of stepping up and taking the reins. Yeah. It, I mean, I, it's, I can't believe the contract is ending. It feels like yeah. it's been, <laughs> that deal has been going on for 15 years, but mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And Sagan's got three more years, yes, yes. <laughs> which is incredible, which is, which is wild. Uh, yeah. But yeah, it, it's, it's an interesting one for sure, because you look at players around the league and I mean, you're seeing, obviously Steven Stamkos has had more production than, than Ben, but he gets 8 million with Nashville per year. And mm -hmm. it's like, okay, these older guys, you're right there. It seems like if they're willing to go somewhere else, they can get these decent numbers. And mm -hmm. I think that Ben, a number they'll be looking at for Ben, I believe will be like Pavelski's uh, first contract, which I think was in the three and a half million uh, mm -hmm. three year. I don't know if, if Dallas is going to look for three year. Cause you know, part of me wants to say exactly what you said. Uh, there's been a decline. Obviously there's been some, some resurgence a little bit lately, Mm -hmm. but he's just been such a good captain. And like every single person that's gone through that organization has just spoken so highly of what he's done. And it's almost like, does that earn you a little more money than your production might? Um, yeah. And so I think they look at, they look at the term. I don't know why, why Ben would leave. I mean, he's made so much money already. Um, yeah, exactly. He's built such a career. He loves Dallas, obviously. Um, it's all he's known. And I think that if he's willing to take, it's so hard to predict the numbers because they're, they're so wild right now, but maybe like 3 million uh, a year for two, you know, it's, it's yeah. kind of like maybe that he could squeeze out three, especially if he dropped that number a little bit for, for AAV. But um, yeah, in my opinion, he'll take a team friendly deal. I think that 
I don't think there's a question of that um, unless there's something going on in, in his mind. I think he wants to win with this team and he's going to do everything he can to win with this team. Uh, you know, Pavelski took a little cut to come back again on his, mm-hmm. on his second deal. Duchesne. Uh, yeah. Duchesne does mm-hmm. the same. So it, it's, it's similar to, to players in, um, in Edmonton who are all coming back right now on these crazy cheap team friendly deals, because when you know you have something special and especially when you're later in your career, you're 30, 34, 35 years old, that becomes more important. And people have, have flat out said that as of late, like, look, I'm, I made a ton of money in my career. I'm very blessed, but I'm, I want to try to win and I want to go try to win a Stanley cup. And I have maybe three or four years to do that left. And I feel like that's where, where Jamie stands at this point. Um, so, I think he comes back. That's just my personal opinion. Okay. I don't mm-hmm. think there's any reason for him not to, um, but you're right. He has to take some sort of, of cut. Um, and it's almost like a, Hey, maybe take two years and then yeah. prove yourself if to get another one or another two from there. Um, and that might be just where they fall, but he's a huge piece of what they have right now. And I, I think he comes back for sure. Yeah, two two years seems seems like the the sweet spot, and obviously I, I believe he wants to be here too. I, as of right now, I, I feel like I'm 80, 80, 20 that that he's returning to the stars. But you've seen recently players that have been long term uh, have spent you know a long amount of time in a play like Stamco, even Pavelski um, have left, and they were captains. It's not like they were yep. just you know pieces. They they were leaders in, in that locker room. So it very much is um uh, a possibility but two years feels like the sweet spot and then it gets him to the end of the the Sagan deal and, and Sagan's interesting too and I'll just kind of throw this one at you too because he'll be 35 here and um in, in three years Sagan feels like a much different story than Jamie because man I don't know if Sagan's gonna get to 38 37 seems like a real stretch right. because he's obviously dealt with a lot of injuries and he had a fantastic year last year. Obviously that was helped out by Duchesne and Marchment um, over 20 goals at five on five. And uh, if you can get that out of Sagan for the next couple years here to end his contract, man, that is huge. And it's not like he's necessarily lived up to his giant number um, either, but a 35 year old Sagan to you, do you think he may be gets to 37 because man that's a lot of miles uh on him and he's he's obviously gone through the the ringer over the past five five years um uh, here in dallas yeah i think he he definitely when he gets to the end of that deal becomes a one year type of player yeah. like pavelski did after his first contract here i just i i think that not only did he face a ton of injuries he had the hardest ones you know he had the yes. hips um, and he had the knee and he had he had things that slow him down and they have l- significantly slowed him down. He's had to completely change the style of game that he's played. Uh, and he's doing that now at a higher level than he was when he first was trying to come back and still play to that level that he couldn't get to. Uh, but you also keep in mind, like he's played since he was, what, 18? So I know. Yeah. Like yeah. 18 <laughs> years old or 19. So. Mm-hmm. You forget that it's like, you know, all of a sudden you're thinking of a guy who's 30. And he's like, oh, what's he played eight years? And you're like, no, he's been in the league for 14 or yes. something crazy. So uh, I think you're right. I think he gets, you know, gets to the end of that deal. And uh, and if anything, you know, we hope he stays healthy um, for his sake, that, he, that there's nothing severe that happens. But um, you're right. It's It feels like a very different, you know, it's not a Joe Pavelski at 30 at 35. It's a it's a different type of animal. Uh, he plays a totally different game than than usually the players who are very successful at an older age play that game like Pavelski, where they're a lot smarter. They're not trying to you know mm-hmm. fly around. They're scoring a lot of the goals in in tight areas. Um, so yeah, I think it's it's definitely a different thing. But it, it, the word interesting is Mike Heike loves to use that word. But it <laughs> yes, is, it is with this. <laughs> it team, really it is. Always feels like it's like oh, this is really this, and then <laughs> okay, wait, but it also could be this, and mm-hmm. that, that's what with going back to Jamie, like he might not have a choice. You know, we mentioned he could take a team friendly deal. Yeah, that team friendly deal could be Jim Nell saying, "Look, we have one million to give you, or we yeah. have two million to give you for on one year." He, you don't know what what the stars uh, are thinking, and and I love to say that it's Jamie Ben, it's their captain. They'll find a way, but. You're right. All these captains are tra- getting traded all over the place, or or getting let just walk to walk away in free agency and signing other places. So um, it'll be something to watch very closely, and mm-hmm. uh, I'll be really interested to see if in what three years those two players are on the and wearing a Dallas sweater. 
Yeah, and something that kind of goes against Jamie is at, at this point in time with Dallas, they have some really, really talented young players that are going to be your core here for the, the next decade. And that was sort of kind of what transpired with Delandria to some degree. I know totally different players, but you, you know, if this was five years ago, Delandria resigns here w- without yeah. a doubt. But there are so many good NHL ready forwards here in Dallas already. It didn't really make a, a ton of sense to for him uh, to, to return because he can get some ice time somewhere else. And he's still really, really young. I'm actually really curious to see how he plays with San Jose and um, and he gets some minutes. Uh, just a quick one before we move into to Jake Ottinger. Um, does 14 or 91 get hung in the rafters? I've seen that conversation a bit. What do you think? I think 14 for sure. I know he doesn't have a cup. It just feels like the longest tenured captain in Dallas Stars history. He's going to find his way. Sagan without a cup uh, in Dallas, I don't think it's in the rafters. But I think Jamie for sure. Where, where, where do you kind of stand on that? Yeah, for Sagan, I agree. If he if he doesn't win a cup, I don't think that it does. He, he maybe gets into the Dallas Hall of Fame. You know, he did he yeah. lit up some crazy numbers when he first mm-hmm. came to this team. But uh, for Jamie, if he wins a cup, obviously it's 100. But I think it's already up there in 85, 90% because not only longest tenure did all these amazing things on and off the ice, but he also remember he brought them into that whole new era when 2013, yeah. when they, mm-hmm. you know, changed, changed their uniforms, changed their look, changed so much about the team um, while they were just in dumpster fire yeah. <laughs> turmoil, in, really. Yeah. Know, in 2011, 2012, mm-hmm. they, everything was happening. They were losing tons of games. You know, Yamir Yager was somehow on the team. Like, <laughs> So it was a lot to do, and and mm-hmm. he was a big part of that that transition. And obviously, bringing Jim Nill was was a huge part as well. And I think you're right. I think it's a hundred percent, almost um, without a cup, and just well above a hundred percent if he's able to somehow win a win a title here. 